Hey y'all, welcome to another pour video. Today I'm doing the first of a four part series. Um, we're doing the winter one, mainly because the colors were the easiest to figure out. So I have a couple different blues that I'm about to put in there. One of them is a pearlized one, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm really into these pearlized and metallic colors right now. The shininess is pretty awesome. Um, and I'm also uh, putting a gray in there, which is a byproduct of a really bad pour that I did previously. It just turned to, into a big gray puddle and unusable. But it, there was so much paint on there, I, I, I couldn't waste it, so I scraped it all off and stuck it in a jar. And I'm recycling it in this video, which is great because, I mean, I just used so much paint. And paint's kind of expensive. Anyways, so I, uh, I'm, I'm getting the hang of these uh, poor videos. I've been watching other YouTubers obsessively, and there's this Dutch woman called Anne Marie, and she did this really informative video on how thin to make the paint. And ever since I watched that video, my paintings have just turned out so much better. So thank you very much, Anne Marie. I, I really appreciated that that video. So when I popped uh, these cups up again, I, I knew that it was going to be um, a, another successful painting. And the paint was just moving the way I wanted it to um, because it was the appropriate uh, thinness. Uh, it just slid all over that piece of MDF that I'm using and uh, just worked out really well though while watching the video I noticed that in that top left hand corner there I it lost all this beautiful blue I'm pretty upset with myself that I just tipped it right off but it's kind of a you know part of uh, this whole pouring game and you just always end up losing little bits that you really didn't want to lose. But I didn't see it while I was actually doing the painting, but looking back now, I'm like, man, I wish I didn't tip that off. At least uh, I stopped a whole lot earlier this time and just tried to fill up some holes with the leftover paint in the cups. Um, one of the nice things about doing a voiceover and uh, um, like later after after I've, I've done the painting is that I can just fast forward through all these little fussy bits. I mean, the video was originally like 20 minutes long and uh, I don't know about other people, but when I watch these videos, I just kind of, I really want to see the end result, but I also want to see the process. So I'm pretty conflicted. So here it is super sped up so you can kind of see what I'm doing but also you don't have to sit there for 20 minutes. I stuck my head in the way of that camera again. I think I did way better this time in terms of keeping it out of the way. Here I am fussing again. I think I showed uh, some considerable restraint this time before I brought out that heat gun. I actually really wished that I hadn't put any heat on it at all. I think I liked it better with that white stripe uh, without any bubbles in it, but again, it's one of those things that you don't really see until you watch the video afterwards. Just blasted the whole painting with heat. I don't know what I was thinking. I can't believe that little uh, torch hasn't run out of the butane yet. The butane torch is thanks to my future mother-in-law. who. Uh, provided the funds for that particular purchase so thank you very much it's been quite helpful and I love it so here I think I'm realizing that I'm pretty much done I'm yay happy with the video happy with the project anyways so this is the first of the four-part series stay tuned for the next painting which is gonna be the fall one have a good day.